Hi, I'm Saraya Garcia, Health Educator over at the City of El Paso Department of Public Health. This video is designed to explain to you the three phases of the smoking ordinance changes, Title IX Health and Safety, Chapter 9.50 Public and Workplace Smoking Restrictions. This video will also touch base on enforcement and violation of the ordinance, as well as tobacco education, to better help city employees like you understand that tobacco use is a serious issue, as well as to strive to make the city of El Paso a smoke-free, tobacco-free city. Why should we care about tobacco prevention? Working with the city is a privilege. Not everyone has a position within the city because the city hires only the best and the brightest. Our website states that the City of El Paso strives to be a high-performance, customer-focused organization that is dedicated to outstanding customer service. Tobacco prevention can definitely make our community of El Paso better than what it is now. Let's take a look at tobacco statistics to better understand why tobacco use is a serious issue. You're probably asking yourself, why is tobacco prevention such an important issue? Did you know, according to the American Lung Association, tobacco kills more people than heroin, cocaine, alcohol, AIDS, fires, homicides, suicides, and automobile accidents combined? Unfortunately, tobacco causes more than 480,000 deaths per year in the United States. This is why our education and dedication is important, so we can improve the health and the lives of the people in our community. After this shocking information, let's take a look at the new smoking ordinance changes. What are the ordinance changes? Title IX Health and Safety, Chapter 9.50 Public and Workplace Smoking Restriction Changes will include Phase 1, Electronic Cigarette Use, Phase 2, City-Owned Property, and Phase 3, Separate Ventilation for Smoke Shops. Let's take a more detailed look at these changes. Phase 1, Electronic Cigarette Use. Effective September 1st, 2014, the use of electronic cigarettes are prohibited at the same places as conventional cigarette smoking is. This ban of electronic cigarette use will include places such as restaurants, bars, movie theaters, anywhere that conventional cigarettes have already been prohibited, as well as within 20 feet of these public place entrances. Phase 2 City-Owned Property Effective January 1st, 2015, City-owned and closed and city-owned outdoor facilities will be non-smoking at all times, with the exception of designated places at the El Paso International Airport. The outdoor spaces that this new ordinance change will be implemented are, for example, on bus stops, parks owned or managed by City of El Paso, and city-owned or managed property. The use of electronic cigarettes will not be allowed in these properties as well. Phase 3, Separate Ventilation. Starting July 1, 2015, all retail tobacco stores will be in isolated or contained physical facilities or will have isolated venting and air controls. The city ordinance defines a retail tobacco store as a retail tobacco store and smoking establishment utilized primarily for the sale and the use of tobacco and smoking products and accessories in which the sale of other products is merely incidental, such as hookah bars or cigar lounges. Now that we know the three phases of the ordinance changes, let's take a look at enforcement of the ordinance. Enforcement starts with you. It is our duty to make everyone aware that everyone has the right to breathe clean air. We make this happen by becoming the enforcement ourselves. When confronted with an ordinance violator, we suggest the following options. You can simply educate a person about the ordinance changes and indicating to them that they are violating the ordinance and politely asking them to put out their cigarette or their e-cigarette. You can also direct the person to appropriate signage to accredit your education and the ordinance. Let's take a look at consequences for ordinance violators. A person who violates any provision of this chapter, 9.50, shall be guilty of an infraction punishable by a fine not exceeding $100, any person who violates any provision of this chapter, 9.50, within one year of receiving a fine, that fine will not exceed $200. Any person who violates any provision of this chapter, within one year of receiving a fine, shall be guilty of an infraction punishable by a fine not to exceed $500. Part one of this video has come to a close. Part two will review different types of tobacco products and effects of using to better understand why tobacco use is a serious issue.
Although most of you may know this information, it never hurts to review the tobacco essentials, especially with our new city ordinance changes. Here we have a diagram that illustrates why tobacco is harmful for our health and life. Here we have a conventional cigarette that contains arsenic, nicotine, ammonia, carbon monoxide. These of course are just a few chemicals we can find, but there are more than 4,000 chemicals that have been identified in tobacco smoke. Now that we know why tobacco is harmful to us, let's take a look at some different tobacco products and effects of using each of these products. The first tobacco product we will be reviewing is the cigarette. Cigarettes contain nicotine and they are made out of dried tobacco leaves. Some slang terms for cigarettes are smokes, cigs, butts, cancer sticks. These names can be helpful if you work with underage youth. Another smoking product of tobacco is cigars. Cigars are tobacco products that are smoked like cigarettes, except they look different than cigarettes. Cigars can vary in size, some are large and thick, others can be small and thin. They can also come in various flavors. Cigars are darker brown because they are wrapped in a tobacco leaf. Some cigars can be so thick they contain the same amount of tobacco as an entire pack of cigarettes. Let's see how these smoking products can affect our health and our community's future. Effects of smoking. Because so much bacteria starts growing inside our mouth when we start smoking cigarettes, this can cause bad breath. Yellowing of the teeth is common with smokers as illustrated in the picture to your left corner. Circulatory problems arise with smokers causing yellow fingernails and cardiovascular disease. Skin loses most of its flexibility. Here to your far right side picture, we have a set of twins aged 61 and one twin has been smoking for 16 years. Between twin A and twin B, which do you think is the twin that smoked for 16 years? Twin B definitely has more wrinkles, dark spots, and under eye circles. We can clearly see how smoking can affect our skin tone and our aging process. Lastly, when our lungs don't get the sufficient amount of oxygen and they are no longer working the same as before, breathing problems can occur. Lung cancer is a huge killer in our next smoking health effect. We have two sets of human lungs here. Which do you think is the affected one? It is clearly seen that the left side lung is the affected one. It's black because of the tar buildup. The structure of the lung is completely destroyed. At this time, I would like to briefly talk about secondhand smoke. One of the main reasons this new city ordinance changes passed is because we want to protect the rights of non-smokers. According to the CDC, secondhand smoke exposure causes an estimated more than 7,300 lung cancer deaths annually among adult non-smokers in the United States. This is why we must protect our non-smokers' right to breathe clean air. Smokers still have the right to smoke, just in designated areas. With our new city ordinance, we can achieve protecting non-smokers' rights to breathe clean air. Moving on to smokeless tobacco products. Smokeless tobacco can come in a variety of forms. For example, there is chewing tobacco, which we can see in the middle picture. There is also snooze to your far left. Snooze, unlike traditional chewing tobacco, comes in a little pouch. This pouch is placed inside the person's cheek. Once done, the person can toss the pouch away instead of spitting. Smokeless tobacco, although perceived as an alternative to smoking, there is definitely not a difference in health effects that it can cause. Let's take a look at the health effects that smokeless tobacco can cause to our health. Although smokeless tobacco users are not at risk for lung cancer, they are at risk for mouth cancer, as it mentions in the last slide. White patches called leukoplakia can form in tobacco users. These patches may form from cancerous cells in surrounding areas. They are quite unattractive from the looks of these photos. If you look closely to your left-hand side photo, smokeless tobacco also causes tooth decay. How else can it affect your mouth? Let's take a look. Hairy tongue and tooth loss. A hairy tongue to your left hand side is caused by a bacteria that grows in the back of a person's tongue. The bacteria grows and gives the illusion of hair. This is why this condition is called black hairy tongue. On your right hand side, we can see a tooth that is about to slide off. Smokeless tobacco can cause so much damage to your gums, it eventually has no support and teeth can slide or fall off. 
Now let's take a look at emerging tobacco products that have been trying to make their way into youth's lives and hands. Hookahs have become rather popular. Shredded tobacco along with flavors are indirectly heated with charcoal and smoked through a hose or a pipe. Because a single session of hookah lasts from 45 minutes to an hour, this exposes users and non-users to secondhand smoke. Users produce as much secondhand smoke as if you were to be smoking 100 cigarettes. Because at times, the hoses or pipes need to be shared by others, this can increase the risk of spreading infectious diseases, such as flu, mono, meningitis. Since hookah users take longer inhalations while using hookah, the chemical levels are also increased, as we see in this diagram. Another popular product is the electronic cigarette. Electronic cigarettes, e-cigarettes, are also one of the main reasons we are having revisions done to our city ordinance. Because of their popularity and their increase in public use, the use of these products will now be banned from restaurants, bars, city-owned and city-managed property. What do we know about e-cigarettes is that this product may contain more nicotine than conventional cigarettes. This has created some concern in light of recent reports of accidental poisonings. Since these products are also battery operated, reports have been made of fire damage from overheated batteries. Let's take a closer look at some of these reportings. Unfortunately, West Texas Poison Control Center reported 13 cases of e-cigarette exposure between January 2014 to April 2014. Nicotine bottles can also resemble children candy bottles, making them appealing to children and youth. After looking at some of these Poison Control Center reportings, let's take a look at a couple of photos of fire damage that electronic cigarettes may cause. On your top left corner, we can see damage from someone charging their electronic cigarette in their car. The electronic cigarette exploded towards the back seat. If you also notice, there is a children's car seat next to the damage. On your bottom right hand side, we see a similar fire damage on a desk from an explosive e-cigarette being charged on a laptop. E-cigarettes can be unpredictable and therefore not a safe alternative to conventional cigarettes. Now that we had a review on tobacco products and its effects, let's take a glimpse at our new city ordinance resources. Where can we find our city ordinance changes? We can find this updated city ordinance on our city website, www.ephealth.com. This is our website homepage. Once on our website homepage, you can click on our Clean Air, Smoke-Free Food Ordinance Changes to your bottom right-hand side. This will take you to our resource page. This online resource page will provide you with downloadable, smoke-free ordinance summary of changes, frequently asked questions, ordinance brochures, and ordinance business decals. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, you can contact me, Sarai Garcia, at 915-212-6643 or contact my coworker, Rosalina Medina, at 915-212-6601.